Я нахожусь на конференции, которая касается альтернативного вида топлива, такого как Димитил Эфир. Это абсолютно новая технология для вас, для меня. Она заключается в том, что можно применять газообразное топливо на дизельном двигателе и не используя свечей, так как идет воспламенение от сжатия. Температура кипения этого топлива минус 25. Соответственно, нам не нужно применять очень высокое давление. И, кроме всего прочего, его можно производить из возобновляемых источников энергии. Это топливо, которое будет в ближайшее десятилетие очень сильно продвигаться. Вы о нем узнаете чуть позже. А я вам сейчас покажу то, что, в принципе, не было доступно другим. И это для меня просто тоже уникальное событие. Это у нас уже готовый автомобиль, который находится в Берлине. Это автомобиль компании Ford, тестовый вариант, который ездит на Диметилофире. Мне дадут возможность на нем проехаться. Я не знаю, что мне вообще позволят в данном случае, но вот наш автомобиль. from the XME project, yes, yes. yes. Uh, this is the first Mondeo, which is now trained on the XME. You can't see so many, but uh, the main changes we have done here is that we have an injection system from Denso. Mm. This means we have new injectors, a new rail and new high pressure pump. And we have an external ECU, you can see at the end. Uh, the communication between the series ECU and the uh, new one from Denso, which makes only the injection, is uh, coupled by uh, CAN bus, and we have uh, the control. We transmit only the injection information from the series ECU to the Denso. You, sorry, what's the ECU? Ah, the electronic control unit. Right, uh, right the, yeah. Yeah. You can see it there. It's, uh, <laughs> And we have a direct liquid injection and the modifications we have done is at the moment we have a new injectors inside and this is a new gallery for the return fuel lines we have a return fuel and we are possible to uh, increase the injection pressure here before the high pressure pump on 30 bars so that we are safe that we have at 90 degrees which is the maximum mm -hmm. temperature normally so keep liquid in the cylinder yeah. head that it is uh, without it's only liquid at all times yeah? have you used the cooling uh, radiator for, for this uh, fuel that that was Uh, we have, now we have a connection to the climate system to uh, cool down the fuel. Ah, so, so, the so, so you use a uh, preliminary cooling. Yes. And uh, what about the fuel pumps? Uh, At the moment we have two fuel pumps. The um, uh, fuel system comes from Prince. Yeah. And we have in the tank the first pump makes, for example, uh, in the tank we have normally 5 to 10 bars, it's in dependence of the temperature. You make uh, from then 5 we make to in 10. the first step uh, to 15, uh, 16 bar, and the boost pump, which is located there, makes the rest up to 30 bar. And we have a control strategy that makes uh, the pressure sensor always the 30 bar, 30 bar at the moment. The car is not running so long at the moment, but it's the first step, and uh, if you learn, uh, yeah, we'll change perhaps a little bit. Uh, it happens sometimes after a long run. Hello. Hi. So you can yeah. optimize the system. I owe you an answer, I know that, but <laughs> it's been okay. hectic. Then I will show you we'll come back. If you want to take a look on the tank and the other systems. Um, this is the uh, additional ECU from Denso. We have um, uh, switched a few from the um, uh, sensor signals, which will be um, put into the series ECU. So we have a connection box. This box here is a gateway between the CAN and the CAN bus structure, so that we can uh, calculate the values, so that the new ECU can work with it. So we have to transfer the informations. 
and the blue uh, one here it's only to make measures and application and normally Seven you measure. this. and the tank itself you can see it's a 60 liter tank from Prince we can have 48 liters of DME here inside and uh, I think it's comparable to 24 or 25 liters of uh, diesel fuel mm -hmm. so that we have 400 kilometers uh, which we can drive with a car and how do you refuel it? Oh, we have uh, from Prince a fueling system here. It's nearly the same as for LPG. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's a connector, and uh, so we come from our filling station with a, a pump, and so we can refill it. And is this a dual fuel car yeah. at the moment? No, at the moment it's a monofuel. Okay. The tank is inside for diesel, but you can okay. restore it. And at the moment, we can which, which means that the injectors are all set up and configured uh, for the, the DME. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you were to put diesel in it, then you have to change the. We have increased the um, the flow of the injectors mm -hmm. so that we can uh, use uh, uh, we can reach the same um, effective power. Mm -hmm. So it's only a safety function to let it run with diesel. This was the first uh, step to check that all is running, the communication and so on. Uh, the engine was running at first with diesel, and then we have switched to DME and done the, uh, the complete smooth uh, Sorry, question. Uh, any dif uh, difference in starting procedure? Like pre pumping uh, so you start? With print, uh, the, the pumps are running if you uh, switch on the ignition and then we, the pumps reach very fast, I think uh, half a second of the maximum, uh, the 30 bar, and then you can start with the normal, as a normal car. And the cold uh, starts uh, on zero degrees and minus 10? Uh, this is not tested at the moment, but cold start uh, from the presentations uh, and from Werner Willems information from other projects, cold start uh, with DME, not uh, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, what about yeah. lubricant? Uh, inside of uh, fuel. You, so you blend the lubricant? Yeah, no, we use uh, DME. It comes from uh, Shah TPC, which uh, will be delivered from Shell. And we have uh, an additive inside uh, Lubrizol. Yeah. 150. Okay, but, so it's a Lubrizol. Yeah, Lubrizol <laughs> additive. 100. Yeah. Right. That's actual. This is, was tested on the um, component uh, at Enzo and was running for very many hours. And so we have done the same yeah, in the project. Mm -hmm. Can you show this? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> question of the desification. I'm very flexible with the injection. Yeah. It's not a good start, especially with the test car. You know, like any chance now, so I do it. And what, you are one of the engineers working on this vehicle, or how is it? Um, the XME project was running for three um, years, yeah. and now it was at first investigation at the TU München and the uh, RWT Aachen. Yeah. Then the IAV has done the construction uh, for the implementation. Yeah. Then we have done the uh, test uh, build up of the engine to prepare our test bench for DME, yeah. and then the investigations on. I think it was 10, 12 weeks yeah. on the test bench. After that, three weeks mounting of a car, yeah. and then three, four weeks for application and uh, doing all the rest to the presentation here. Okay, cool. do you have a limit at uh, hmm? 2000 revs? Yeah, yeah so it can be because it's. And what is the efficiency running on DME compared to uh, running on ordinary diesel? 
it's nearly the same. I think um, that's, I was at the last one or two percent better from the efficiency, uh, which was shown in the test bench investigations. Okay, that's good. But nearly the same. Yeah. yeah. Talking about what kilo? Or what? Uh, it mu uh, must be uh, energy, no, per per joule, uh, nearly right? the double um, uh, value of fuel mm -hmm. amount mm -hmm. because uh, the, the heat content is lower. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, if you mm, prepare the energy you need for diesel injection and for DME, it's nearly the same. Mm -hmm. So the efficiency is mm -hmm. nearly the same then. And did it require any engine modification, uh, like time advancing? Uh? Yes, yes, yes. We have to prepare our all new from EGR, uh, the timings and the pilot uh, and what quantity and so on. And what about the lambda, the air fuel ratio? No, we have reduced the lambda with the EGR so that we could use more. Uh, you've heard it, uh, the, we have not a suit knock straight off at the moment with DME, so we could reduce um, uh. the, the NOx level uh. and <coughs> yeah, the, the maximum what we could prepare here was the uh, independence of the amount of CO, so that mm -hmm. the CO level was not too high mm -hmm. because uh, we have not changed anything at the standard engine, only the injection system and so we have a, a increase of CO if you have uh, very low lambda values. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what has the re regular here? 14.7? Do you use the same uh, lambda probes or they were modified? Or the oh, so the, the lambda probes are the same as the series engine. The, the series. And uh, in the future, the catalytic converter will require some uh, modification, or it will remain the same. Oh, uh, I think if you make a serious project from this, then you will take a look on all the parameters and the EGR rate, and perhaps you have to uh, change the interaction of uh, the, 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 the drill or the, the tumble inside of the combustion chamber and so on. So it, it will be modified. Yes, yes. Heavily. <laughs> if you have any you can find the right side. What about uh, the emissions then? You said that uh, you know obviously you, you don't have the trade-off between NOx and particles, but uh, that is in and out, I assume. What about uh, out of the exhaust pipe? Yeah, at the moment, uh, no, our basic application was uh, um, very high, and now we have, I think, it's a basic calibration of 170 NOx uh, at the moment. Okay, and but the, the car is, has is normally only um, right. LNT um, system, not an SCR system. Okay. And uh, it's a basic is here EU5 mm. for this car. Okay, okay. The, the question was, could we reduce its rates? Could we reduce the um, DPF? Can we uh, re um, can we uh, do we need the SCR system or not, and mm. so on. Yes, yes. It's a test car, so... And what about acceleration and horsepower? Any changes? Um, it's nearly the same. Nearly the same. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. You're not gonna stay.